I've been studying wrongful convictions now for almost a decade. And one of the things that continues to concern me is that the criminal justice system does not do what we expect and have happen in other professions. And that is look at these problems after they have occurred. So those of us who take airplanes can be secure in the knowledge that if anything happens on a plane, that the National Transportation Safety Board is going to investigate what happened to make sure that that error doesn't happen again. Doctors do this too in hospitals. If there is an error, doctors convene a group to figure out what went wrong to prevent it. Only in the criminal justice system, where the stakes are so high, do we not see professionals come together where there are, when there are errors to try to learn what happened to prevent it. Not to point fingers, not for legal liability, simply to make sure that we have the best criminal justice system we can have and to make sure that the innocent aren't being convicted and that the guilty are being convicted. And if there's anything that this research can help move forward, I hope it is that. That if we are truly committed to professionals in the criminal justice system, they need to be willing to look at when errors occurred and try to rectify them. This is social science research about the criminal justice system. We have these two sets of cases, the wrongful convictions and the near misses. And what we're doing in this research is we are com comparing them, what happens to a defendant in one set of cases versus the other. So someone comes into the criminal justice system, their can case can go one way or the other. What we're trying to figure out is what explains why a case goes this way as opposed to going that way. Why does a defendant get wrongly convicted as opposed to having a near miss? The one set of cases, the wrongful convictions, what happens in these cases is someone who is factually innocent ends up being indicted. That means he's going to be prosecuted. He ends up being convicted of a crime he does not commit, and he does time for that. Eventually, he ends up being exonerated. That means that eventually he's able to show evidence that he did not commit the crime. That's one set of cases. In the other set of cases, what we call the near-miss cases, again, someone who is factually innocent ends up being indicted. The prosecution is going to go forward and begin this case. But before he's convicted, the prosecution and the defense between the two of them realize that the person is factually innocent and he has his case dismissed or at trial, the jury con concludes that this person is factually innocent. They acquit him, but they acquit him not on the basis of a legal technicality. They acquit him because they conclude he didn't do the crime. We use the term near miss because what we're really interested in this research is how the criminal justice system identifies someone who's factually innocent to prevent the wrongful conviction. This isn't simply trying to understand how wrongful convictions happen. That's looking at a lot of the problems in the system. We also want to look at what the system does well and how the system is able to identify factually innocent people to prevent their conviction. We use both quantitative and qualitative methods for this research. Quantitative research is what people generally know as statistical research. So we're looking for statistical patterns between both sets of cases. Qualitative research is where you actually look at the case facts and try to figure out what's going on in, in an individual case. And there we were also, we, we had the assistance of an expert panel. There we had uh, experts from the criminal justice system, prosecutors and police officers and the like who are able to help us look at these cases as well. In order to do the quantitative research, we had to collect information on all of these cases. We had approximately 60 variables of information on every single case. We have over 400 and something cases in this data set and we have over 60 variables on each one of these. This took years of research to be able to even get that information. 